So the condenser's job is to condense the steam that comes out of the turbine and turn it back into, com I'm sorry, saturated liquid water. Um, now keep in mind that that's not its only job. From a thermodynamic point of view, its job is to reject heat from the system. I mean, the second law requires it, right? There's no way that we're going to be able to produce work directly from heat input. We have to reject heat as well. So the heat rejection takes place here in this fun device called the condenser. Now, if you look up top, um, that large rectangular structure up there is actually the discharge steam from the turbine. The turbine's on the deck above. Um, the steam's going to come straight down and into the shell. The shell here is the large cylindrical space of the condenser. Um, now, within the shell, you not only have the steam, but then you have the cooling water tubes. So let's just talk about it one at a time. The steam comes in from the top. Um, I think in this particular plant, it's a condensing turbine, so we're actually going to have high-quality two-phase water that comes out of the turbine. So the two-phase mixture comes in, it hits all the cold tubes, um, the steam that is still in the vapor form condenses into liquid. Now granted, it's a two-phase mixture, right? So it's saturated liquid that's formed, and that saturated liquid then collects here in the bottom, and this large section in the bottom is what we'll call the hot well. So the steam condenses and collects in the hot well, the saturated liquid comes out as condensate, and then if you kind of follow around here, the condensate comes through this one small tube, and then it's gonna go right into the condensate pumps, which are over here behind it. So like many plants, uh, there's gonna be redundant condensate pumps. Each pump is capable of 50% of the full flow. Um, so we've got an A, B, and a C condensate pump. They're identical. Um, these are large vertical pumps, as you can tell. And then, um, you know, the motors are up on top. So the condensate is then going to be distributed into two of the three pipes. Um, you know, you could see that, uh, for instance, there's an expansion valve in here. Uh, not valve, an expansion joint or connection, you know, so that we can move a little bit, you know, under thermal or earthquake loads. Um, you know, there's a, a um, butterfly valve here in case you need to isolate the system, let's say for maintenance. Um, there's a variety of other valves in the system for control purposes. Um, but basically this is a condensate pump. Um, the condensate pump is gonna send the water up into the lowest pressure, which would be the number four, the low pressure feed water heater. And then one other thing I wanted to point out here, let's keep in mind that the lower the pressure that we're able to obtain within the steam space of the condenser, therefore the lower the temperature and the lower the enthalpy. And we really want to remove as much heat from the steam as possible. So um, there's typically gonna be a vacuum line connected up to the condenser. Now, sometimes the vacuum is created by a vacuum pumping system. Sometimes the vacuum is created through a system that's called a steam jet air ejector. Um, th they used to have, as I recall, a steam jet air ejector system where you would actually take a little bit of steam off of the main steam line and run it through a converging diverging nozzle. Um, that would create a vacuum at the throat of the nozzle. And then that point of vacuum through a pipe would be connected here into the steam space. So you can actually see right above me, this line right here is the vacuum line. So this would be connected again to the air ejector, or again, it could be a vacuum pump in, in some systems. And then the other thing I wanted to note is that there's a lot of other pipes that are coming into this condenser. If we think about the thermodynamics in class, there wouldn't be any other pipes coming into the condenser. Um, but the reality is that when you warm up the system, um, you're going to have a whole lot of condensate being formed, and you just don't want that flowing through your turbine or through some of the other parts of the system. So you can have all these dump lines that are going to dump condensate out of these devices, um, and that's what you know most of these lines are over here. Um, it's just a way to handle the condensate. Um, another thing one should note is that since feed water heater number four has its drains cascading backwards, it's gonna cascade backwards into the next lowest pressure device, which in this plant is the condenser. So there's also gonna be a condensate, um, let's call it a, a condensate drain, the drain from the lowest pressure feed water heater, and that's also gonna come into this particular device. And um, that line is gonna be up over here. So, you know, that's why we have so many lines attached to a condenser. And then the other thing that's worth noting in a condenser has to do with the cooling water. 
So let's keep in mind that this is a surface condenser. It's not a direct contact condenser, meaning that the steam and liquid water would mix. It's a surface condenser. So it's basically a big heat exchanger with tubes in it. Um, the steam is in the shell space and within the shell are a series of tubes. Now, the tubes contain the cooling water that comes from the cooling tower. In this particular condenser, um, it's a two-pass system. Um, the cooling water is going to come from the cooling tower, and it's going to go through a series of thousands of tubes that are in the bottom half of the condenser shell space. And when the tubes get to here, um, this is what we call a water box. Um, it's basically just a big open head on the end of the heat exchanger. And when the water comes out through the bottom set of tubes, it has no other place to go but to go upwards and turn around. And then the water goes right back through the top set of tubes, um, picking up even more heat. And eventually that warm cooling water is going to flow out the other side and go back to the cooling towers. So let's go outside now briefly and look at the cooling water in the outlet. So the other part of the condenser is the cooling water side, right? So from our cooling tower, we have cool water that comes in to the condenser from the bottom. So these two pipes, the cooling water is going to come in. Um, this is actually a divided condenser, condenser. There's basically a plate of steel that runs right through the entire condenser. So you can actually run just one half of it at a time if you wanted to. Now, the water comes in through the bottom and this is again called the water box, so this is outside the shell. Um, this, however, is called the divided water box. So halfway up is another sheet of steel that goes all the way across. Now, when the cooling water comes in from the bottom, it can't go straight up because of the steel, so it has no choice but to turn and go into the condenser. Now, there's actually a space between the water box and the condenser is called the tube sheet. And that's really nothing more than where the condenser tubes are welded onto. Um, so there is actually a certain amount of thickness associated with this connection, um, you know, kind of right in here. And, um, you know, you can see that right in between the water box and the shell of the condenser, that's the tube sheet right there. So that's where the tubes are going to be welded. Nonetheless, the cooling water comes up can't go upwards any further, so it makes a turn. It goes through the bottom set of tubes, as we talked about previously, all the way to the other water box, where it makes another U-turn, comes out this way, um, in through the top. Um, and then, again, it has nowhere else to go because of the sheet of steel. Um, so it can only go out the sides, and it comes down on each side, and back into the ground, and ultimately over to the cooling tower. Um, now let's keep in mind, too, that there are a variety of auxiliary heat loads in the plant, like the lube oil system that we have to keep cool, the generators to keep cool. So when the cooling water comes from the cooling tower, a fraction of it is actually gonna flow through this pipe, the smaller pipe, and that just goes to these auxiliary heat exchangers for the other cooling purposes. Um, that water um, picks up heat, and then when it comes back, you know, it comes right back in here um, and it joins in with the uh, cooling water return to the cooling tower and flows back over to the cooling tower. One thing I might note just in the very end here is that, um, you know, you do have these manhole covers in case you need to go in for maintenance, but you can also take off the entire head of this heat exchanger. In fact, you would have to do that periodically. Um, no matter how clean your water is, you are going to get some minerals in there. It will plate out over time. And um, in order to maintain good heat transfer, uh, you're going to actually have to clean out each of those thousands of tubes. So once you take this off and drain it of its water, what you would see is the tube sheet with thousands of tubes that are now welded onto the end of it. Um, basically, you have these metal brushes um, that are on the end of thin metal tubes with motors on the end. And you just turn the motors on and you spin those brushes. They go the full length, about 40 feet or so cleaning out all the crap, for lack of a better word. Um, and then you do that tube after tube after tube after tube until the whole system is clean.